Thank you for joining us tonight to discuss all things finance and watch the premiere of The Banker. Please be sure to cast your vote on the NAACP Image Awards.net for The Banker by March 5th. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jessica Brown, also known as College Girl, and I am so excited to be here tonight to talk all things finance and give you a special premiere of The Banker. Additionally, tonight I am here with my mentor and big sister, the founder of my fab finance, the Tanya Rapley tonight, so we can discuss all things finance. Tanya, how's everything going? Everything is good. I'm so honored to be here with you and talking about this film because it's so important to talk about financial literacy in all the forms and especially the history that leads to where we are today. So I'm happy to have this conversation. Looking forward to watching this film after our conversation. Um, and yeah, welcome everybody here. So we have some special guests tonight that's going to tune in and that's going to chime in on this amazing conversation. However, I also want everyone to make sure that you are going to visit the NAACP imageawards.net to vote for the banker. There are three categories. We have outstanding actor, Anthony Mackie. We have outstanding actress, Miss Nia Long. And of course, outstanding ensemble, for the banker. So please make sure you head over there and begin voting as your vote matters for this film. And of course, special thanks to Apple TV for sponsoring this amazing event tonight. So Tanya, let's get right to it. All right. Let's talk about finance. What are some major things that people should begin to think about in terms of financing? What are some basic things that people can begin to do? I mean, when it comes to finance, and I think this film is centered around, well, I know this film is centered around real estate, right? So the things that you need to do to properly prepare for a real estate transaction are the things that you should be doing anyway. Right. So it's making sure that your credit is up to par, making sure your credit is in good standing, making sure you have a good handle on your debt, making sure you have money in savings. And, you know, those are essentially the financial basics. Um, you know, we just bought a home. And so as a financial educator, it's a really big deal for me to finally buy my own home. Um, and the process is very detailed. Like it's not much you can hide from right. them. So you really want to make sure that you're focusing on those three financial fundamentals, which is credit, debt, and savings. And I mean, outside of buying a house, you'll be good pretty much for any scenario. And with that being said, as the author of How to Pay for College When You're Broke, uh, student loans is hindering uh, people from securing all of life's luxuries, just like you said, a home, a car, and all those things. So it is so important that everyone begins to focus on credit um, as making sure that you have phenomenal credit will ensure that you can gain economic stability and generational wealth for years to come. Absolutely. Well, Jessica, I have a question for you. What about college students? What should college students be thinking about, especially as they watch this film and when it comes to their finances? College students should really begin to think about budgeting. You know, it is so important to budget and to save. Um, many students are receiving student loan refunds annually, and they are blowing that money on materialistic things and things that they don't need. Um, and they realize that the Nike shoes you just bought or the wig that you just bought is on, uh, is, is on an interest rate. So it is so important, especially for college students. You know, you're getting all these credit cards in the mail and you don't have to sign up for everyone. Just, be, just because they're giving you a credit card doesn't mean that you have to have it. Additionally, you want to make sure that you are budgeting and saving as you never know when you're going to really need a rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like you said, retirement. Um, I think a lot of people my age and college students, we're not really thinking about retirement, right? We're continuously getting job after job after job every couple months. And we have 401ks and all these things all over the place. So it is so important that you also keep that in the forefront. Oh, my gosh. And 401k, you know, before I became my fab finance and everything, I had a, a story life before this. And I remember I had a 401k, right? And I was doing an internship in college for the city of Cincinnati. And I left that job and they gave me the opportunity of cashing it out or rolling it over. Right. I think I had maybe $2,300 in there and I was like, oh, I'm going to cash that out. Right. Here I am thinking I'm going to get all of it. Mm -hmm. No. Once they took taxes out that thing, I might have got like $1,100 out of wow. it. And at the end of the day, I don't know what I did with that money. Like, right. I might have went to Myrtle Beach. Yeah. I don't know what I did with that money. <laughs> and so it would have served me so much more to be working for me and be purchasing investments and so forth so that I could allow it to grow in the market. And I mean, I now I have a substantial portfolio, but mm -hmm. it would have been so much doper if I would have 
just done the right thing with it. And so, I didn't have anyone telling me to do the right thing. I didn't have a college girl. Yeah. So like, how did you really learn finances? Self-taught. So I moved to New York City when I was, I moved to New York City in 2008. I had like a music blog and everything else. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. <laughs> um, but then I ended up falling back on my degree and working a nonprofit. And I was working a nonprofit, creating events for low-income women. And I was sitting there, I was like, sis, you got a bachelor's degree, but you in the same position as these right. people in the room because you're sleeping your finances under the rug. And so that was when I said, you know what, I'm going to figure this out. I went and I was like, I'm going to pay someone to help me with this. Went in there and so forth, found out how much it was going to cost to pay someone. <laughs> ooh, ooh, mm -mm. Uh, I couldn't afford to pay someone. So I said, okay, well, I just finished school a couple of years ago. I can learn things. Right. So I started learning everything there was about finance. It started with improving my credit score. Um, and then that just opened up the world to me and helped me understand that just because you might have struggled with math growing up, just because, you know, you don't feel like you're the best with money doesn't mean that you can't do money better. Right. And so that my fat finance was born shortly after that. I was like, I want to be, you know, I want to be someone relatable for someone to understand personal finance. That time it was Susie Orman and right. Dave Ramsey. And right. They didn't. People that didn't look like us. Th they just didn't know my life. Right. Like they, it just. <laughs> it, it ain't. It didn't make sense for me, a young woman living in New York City, living my best life. So that's why my brand is called My Fat Finance because we don't do deprivation as a financial freedom strategy. I like things. Mm -hmm. I like to buy things, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to buy them at the expense of my financial goals. And it's helping people figure out that balance between their financial goals and their financial wants. So what are like some things that people can begin to do on their own? Like I know a lot of people talk about, oh, well, you can print out all these letters and, and dispute these things and, and mail these things into Equifax, TransUnion uh, to kind of improve your credit score. Is that something that you recommend? I mean, yeah, at this point, I'm an OB. Uh, now it developed it so that you can actually dispute stuff online. Um, but when I started, you had to send in letters and so forth. Okay. And so, um, but you, I would say go to the forums. Like one of the, I learned the most information from just reading like the myfico.com forums and so forth. If you want to focus on your credit score, that's okay. a great place to go. Find out what's been working for other people. Reddit forums is another free resource where you can just find out what is working for people. And then books. Like when I started, I was working at a nonprofit making $27,000 in New York City mm. a year. I ain't have no money. <laughs> right. Yes. yes. I didn't have any money. <laughs> so I went to the library. One of the books I got was Girl, Get Your Money Right mm -hmm. um, by Glenda Bridgeforth. Um, and another book I love now is actually I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. And so reading books is also awesome. Oh, and there's one more book, One Page Financial Plan, which is by Carl Richards, which is another great book. You know, start by reading books. Start by just broadening your financial horizons, figuring out what's possible. But I think that is so important that you say that because right now we live in a culture and generation where if it's not in 120 characters and it's not getting that information and we really need to get back to the basics about reading, about doing research and really finding this information and really following people of substance who are talking about these things, not that that will impact your future. And I think that that is so, so important, especially for all the college kids that I speak to. Mm -hmm. I'm always telling them like, look, you need to follow people that are going to be influential in terms of your future finances, your career, the things that you want to obtain in life. And that is so important. That's why I'm so happy that you brought that up about reading because reading is fundamental. And there's so many resources out there for us mm -hmm. to learn about finance. Absolutely. I mean, I have a book, The Money Manual. It's yes. available. It's a great resource too. Um, <laughs> but, you know, also just, I would love for you to share like, why did you start College Girl? Because you have a dynamic brand too. So, I started College Girl after working at multiple institutions and just seeing um, so many students having to go home for minimal balances, right? Mm. Like $200, $300. Uh, to us, that may not seem like a lot of money, but for someone who really doesn't have it, it is a lot. And then yeah. they're getting to their their education and they can't matriculate or finish because of a small balance or they're just over borrowing and making bad decisions mm. and then graduating with over hundreds of thousands of dollars in not just federal loans, but private loans that all come at different interest rates. And I think about one of my really good friends growing up, uh, my bad now, how she had to go home her freshman year uh, from Rutgers University because she didn't have money, but mm. she came from a family where she was from Washington DC, from a single parent household. Uh, finances weren't taught. Mom wasn't educated in that space. And it's just so sad to see so many of my friends that never graduated because of money. And yeah. then working at an institution and seeing so many of these kids with bright futures not being able to graduate 
because of money. So that's why I started College Girl, because I wanted to educate students and families around the nation about how to make the best informed decisions on financing a college education to secure financial freedom post-graduation. Yeah. Um, because as, as you know, student loan debt is more than credit card debt at yeah. $1.7 trillion. It's real, yeah. It's real, and more people have credit cards than they do degrees. So the fact that, and the fact that that is such a big number, um, we really have to begin to borrow smart. And I feel like we're not having these conversations with our kids. You know, as a parent, your kid to college goes, go to college. Yeah. But when it's time to begin to pay for it, nobody has a plan. Yeah. Because so. a lot of parents assume that going to college means that their child's going to be successful. Right. Or like, oh, I just went to college. Now my job's done to be successful. When that's not necessarily the case either. Right. Because you need soft skills when you graduate. Too. Yes. Like, you can have a degree, but if you can't, when you go into a job interview, and as we see, you know, in the banker, there's a series of interviews and so forth. Mm -hmm. But if you go into a job interview or interview, you know, with a lender or a funder or something of that nature, you're selling yourself. Yes. And a lot of people don't understand that college isn't necessarily going to teach you how to sell yourself. Right. It gives you something to sell yourself with or in a company of yourself, but it's not going to teach you that. So exactly. It's really important to build those skills while you're in school too. Build those skills, of course, because your network is your net worth, you know, yeah. and that's why a lot of people go to college. So it's just so important that early on you begin making great decisions. Like I know in college when I, when I was going to school, I spent $100 on my nails every two weeks, you know, nails, feet, eyelashes, eyebrows. Every two weeks? Yeah. Girl. And then, and, and then, but then I looked up after four years of college. Yeah. That was $10,000. That's crazy. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have it like that. I, I didn't have it like <laughs> that in college. I might have, see, I'm, I'm older than you. So like for me, it was buying, like I was still buying weave in a pack. So <laughs> yeah. for me, it was like, oh, I'm going to get this. Good, Remy Weave, where I'm going to take a vacation. And for me, a vacation at that time, I went to college partly in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and then I transferred to school in Miami, Florida. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, after I transferred to Miami, it's like, what's vacation when you live in right, Miami right, right. and so forth? Uh, so, but I'm trying to think about the things that I used to waste my money on. I'll never forget my mom called me because she got one of my bank statements and saw <laughs> that I was in college eating a red lobster. And she's like, who do you think you are? Eating a red lobster. Eating a red lobster. And I was ordering the King's Feast. But imagine now, like you have these students that got Uber, Uber Eats. I like I used to have to walk in D.C., take the metro to the mall. I mean, just literally try to survive. It's so much easier to spend your money. And I think that's something else to think about as we're having a financial conversation is the ways that you spend money unintentionally throughout the day. Like, yes. You know, it's so easy to just, you know, I can pick my phone up and take a picture of myself and spend money. You yes. can click the button two times and spend money. You mm -hmm. can, you know, your information is auto save. You can literally start putting your credit card information. Boom, boom, bam. You're done. Shop pay makes it yes. easy. So it's important if you're thinking about those financial goals that you want to reach, such as building your savings, boosting your credit score, remaining on budget and so forth. You really want to make sure that you're identifying those ways that you're silently spending money. Yeah. And like that is a big, big piece. Cause like, just like you said, it's just so accessible. You know, you just go somewhere and tap, 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 tap. And you're not realizing how much money that you spent in tapping all day long. So it is so important that you guys begin to, um, understand the importance of budgeting and financing and seeing where you're really spending your money on to see how you can improve. And with that, do you have like some, a tip, like what should people use for budgeting spending? Cause I know with my bank, I can see how much money I spend in food mm -hmm. and transportation and, and food is my biggest expense. <laughs> most uh, people, <laughs> when I'm working with most people, when I'm looking at people's budgets and so forth, or like right now we're about to launch our fab finance boot camp, And so when I'm working with people on their finances, Usually it is um, spending money on food. My friend um, Shawnee over at Purse Empowerment actually has a dope challenge called You Got Food at Home, Sis. Ooh, so I just want to plug I that, love that on challenging people not to eat out and so forth. But a few good apps. I was just talking about this with the My Fat Finance community last Friday. Um, people seem to love every dollar. So okay. every dollar is one. And then I've heard a lot of good things about Clarity. There's Mint, which is now owned by the Intuit family and so forth. I have gotten to the point in my financial journey where I don't necessarily budget the way that I used to budget when I was getting above water financially. Okay. Now it is, okay, these are my, my financial goals. These are my responsibilities. Put your money in savings here. Put your money in investments here. Make sure these bills are taken care of. Now that we've done everything we need to do and you have money in savings, like the rest is yours, sis. Right. Um, so that's what works for me. But when I was getting on track financially, I was diligent with a budget. So the thing to understand about budgeting is it's going to change over your journey. Just because mm -hmm. you start budgeting and you're a little more structured now doesn't mean you got to keep that structure for the next 
you know, five to 10 years, because you'll get to a point where you have an abundance. That's what I'm affirming for everybody who's yes. watching this. You get to the point where you have an abundance and you're like, okay, now I can operate with an abundance mindset instead of the lack mentality, the lack experience I previously had. And that is such a good point that you say that because, you know, as you level up in life, you want to make sure that you are changing the way you spend money. But it's also important to note that that doesn't necessarily mean you spend more money. Like I have a lot of friends who are now making more money. So that means they have to have the best apartments in Washington, D.C. They have to spend more money on shoes and materialistic things. When in reality, you still want to keep those goals and making sure that you're putting money where things should be and being smart. Just because you have it doesn't mean that you have to spend it. Yeah. I mean, I'm all about a balance, too. You know, at the end of the day, like do some of the things that make you happy. Don't do anything everything that makes you happy. But some of the things that by waking up in a sun drenched apartment with a view that you love is what you love. Cool. Do it. But if you're not in financial position to do that and drive the car you love and vacation mm. at the places you love and get the bags you love or get the wallet and the shoes that you love and get the coats you love and do everything else. Don't stretch yourself trying to do everything. But if there's that one thing that's going to make a difference in your quality of life um, and maybe even push you to do more, then like make a way. Right. Make a way and figure out what makes financial sense. Maybe clear some other things out, pay off some debt and so forth so that that becomes your only and biggest financial obligation rather than everything else sucking the money out. I absolutely love that. And, you know, we are about to go to commercial break and bring in some special guests coming up next. Commercial. All right, guys, make sure you vote for the banker in three categories for the NAACP Image Awards. Outstanding actor, Anthony Mackie. Outstanding supporting actress, Nia Long. Outstanding ensemble, the banker. Please make sure you cast your vote by March 5th. And we are back. I am Jessica Brown, also known as College Girl, here with the founder of My Fab Finance, Tanya Rapley. And of course, we are discussing all things finance. Uh, so I wanted to bring in someone very, very special. Uh, Tanya, you are very familiar with him. Um, and I recently got very familiar with him. His name is Mickey Fax. And a couple years ago, he did this phenomenal freestyle with Funk Masterflex that was all about credit and finance and basically about the black community and how we spend our money. So it is going to be amazing conversation with Mickey Fax coming up right now. Um, and we're gonna just learn more about what made him come up with this rap? What made him uh, begin to live on this financial path to inspire other people to become financially free? Yo, what's good guys? Hey Mickey, how's it going? What's going on? Y'all see the shirt, Generational Wealth. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we love it. We love it. So Mickey, tell us, what have you been up to? What inspired you uh, to do your freestyle with Funk Master Flex? I mean, you really went hard for three minutes about credit and you really hit every point on the nail. So just give us a little background on that. Well, I definitely was fixing up my credit at the time. And as I was going through it and, and listening to what you guys are talking about, I had to kind of do some research on my own. And as I was going through the research, I was like, I started asking a lot of my friends, how were they fixing up their credit? And they just was like, we didn't know. So I, I took it upon myself to write about my experience. And I did not know that it would take a life of its own when I went on to Funkmaster Flex to do it. I, that was a very risky thing to do on that platform. A lot of times my contemporaries, they like to go up there and, you know, be very braggadocious and even <laughs> talk about being uh, very, you know, spending their money in different ways on different things. I decided to, to go the opposite way and direction. And it led me to a rabbit hole of finance that I am now like engulfed in and I am just appreciating every single day. That is absolutely awesome. Tanya, what do you think about that? No, that's super dope and it, super dope. It warms my heart because Mickey, I met you back when I first moved to New York because I had a blog called The Eargasm. And so to see oh, yes. your journey here and seeing you in personal finance, I think it's important for other people to see people who look like them talking about money and making it relevant and making it enjoyable and so forth and being transparent. I think that's the biggest thing. So I, I, I want to know, like, what have you learned in being transparent when it comes to your finances outside of just your finances? I, I had to be honest with myself and, and see what I was spending 
consistently and constantly. Uh, I had to go through a lot of my credit card statements, a lot of my bank saving statements, and see what I was frivolously spending money on. And I was very surprised at what I was spending money on that I just didn't realize had no, you know, actual value to it in the long run. And when, once I started to realize that, I was able to make uh, sound decisions for myself and for my family when it came to fixing my credit. And I, I believe uh, just what you were saying, you know, I have to be honest with myself. And even when I create these kind of uh, musical pieces to let people know that, yes, I was too in your shoes. I don't want you to go down this route. I, I'm not here preaching to you. I'm here letting you know there's a better way to do this. Yeah, it'd be the small stuff. Yeah. It'd really be the small. People think that it's the big stuff that throws them off track financially, but it's the small stuff. It's the runs to Target. It's the runs to the local, the bodega down the street. Mm -hmm. It's the fees from taking money out at the bodega down Tell the street about and it. so forth. <laughs> it's the Ubers. Just like, oh, no, it's just a 6 or it's $8 Uber ride. Like, those things really add up, and it really is the small stuff. Yes, they do. And with you being, you know, in the rap world, in the urban space, I mean, especially with your counterparts, right? They're frivolously spending money. How do you have those conversations with them um, about what they're doing? Um, can you even have a conversation? And what does that look like? Uh, it's very tough to have conversations like that with my friends and peers and contemporaries, because at the end of the day, there is a lifestyle that comes along with being a hip hop artist. And there is an image that comes along with it as well. But I do believe that there should be, and I think there is going to be a transitional period for artists to kind of veer away from that kind of lifestyle. You look at guys like J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, they aren't, you know, draped and drenched in jewelry or flashy clothes to get their point across. And they are usually uh, amongst the top MCs that are on the Forbes every single year. So I, I think it's, it comes down to, you know, showing people that this is the way to move. I do know that, you know, it, it's in our blood, it's in our culture and in our heritage to be flashy because our ancestors did it in Africa and things of that nature. But, you know, if we want to be able to get ahead within this particular generation, we have to be more mindful of what we use our money for, how we use it to make more money, and how we can use this information to give it to uh, the next generation that's coming up. You know, just as a financial educator, when I'm having conversations with people and so forth, one of the things I always frame the conversation on is understanding like how we got to this point. Mm. I think that one of the great things about films like The Banker is they show like what was going on in the 60s, the 50s, 60s and so forth, as far as what people were dealing with the redlining in this country and so forth. But even dialing it back further, thinking about you know, as an African-American woman, our history in this country, the way that, you know, a lot of times we couldn't own property. Right. If we So we had to wear our wealth. That's essentially why it has been baked into our ethos almost or our identity as a people. It's like you proved you had something because you wore that thing because you couldn't buy property to show what you owed, owned and stuff. And so it is breaking that mentality and understanding now we have different opportunities available to us, but it is generational. It yeah. really is a generational ideology that we're breaking and so forth. So as a financial educator, that's part of the work that I do is just like, we don't have to live like that anymore. Right. Like, now you can invest in things and have property and own things other than your clothing. But it's so deeply seated. And there's anybody who's watching this and feels like, you know, I'm that person. I'm the person wearing my wealth and so forth. Give yourself grace because you are literally breaking generational traumas. And the crazy thing, I'm so happy you said that because, I mean, the banker, I, it inspired me so much because it took me back to when I was 17 years old. I got my first job at Commerce Bank. And, you know, all my friends in high school, they were working at the supermarket. So right, the fact I had that, a supermarket job. Yeah, you know, so the fact that I was a teller, I was really doing something. And I really learned the difference between black and white. Mm. Being black, we withdraw. Being mm. white, you deposit. Mm. And I say that because I would see us come to the bank on Fridays, knowing we had no money in the bank, we could not cash our paycheck against anything, but we are pulling up in a Cadillac with our hair done, with our nails done, and you're begging the bank teller for us to cash this check because you need it. Mm -hmm. Whereas our counterparts were coming through the drive through in any kind of car with any regular kind of clothes on, and I'm opening their account and I see $50,000 in there. You know, And I'm like, hey, do you want me to cash this and make it available now? 
Oh no, sweetie, that's okay. Cause they weren't worried about it. They had it and they didn't, like you said, they didn't have to wear it. And I just think that that is so important because we don't really talk about that. And with these rappers, I saw a new rapper, YKO Serious. I don't know what his name is, <laughs> but I saw it on Shade Room. And basically he drives like a Hyundai. Uh, and then he was talking about how he's not spending any of his money on chains. He wants to buy real estate. And oh. that's where it starts because it's in it, it, it's our culture and it's what we are marketing out and what we are putting on to on to students. So if we are not putting out there positive uh, financial uh, management, then the next generation of our leaders will not be responsible borrowers and will not have the financial freedom that they deserve. So, Mickey, before you go. Spit something for us. Like, let's talk about the banker. Let's talk about our conversation. Like, hit hit us with a couple lines. Yeah, I got. I wrote something down for y'all because I knew this was going to be a special interview that you guys was doing. So, you know, I put something together for you guys. So, let I'm gonna get into it right now. I didn't have enough time to memorize it, so I have to read it from. My- <laughs> we it's cool. We appreciate you. Much love. Generational wealth. It starts in the home. We can learn it quicker because it's all in your phone. I just saw a movie about mortgage and loans. It had Anthony Mackie that starred in a role. A part of the goal of the banker was to broaden the scope of how African-Americans should market the hope and targeting growth. Remove all portions of broke and consider how wealth can be a part of approach. I don't got a lot of time, so I'll just say this. Let every dollar work for you and you will stay rich. Have paperwork in every deal that you may pitch and double check every number so it all makes sense. And above all, you got to make sure your credit's stable. Food for thought. We'll talk more about it on the dinner table. Shout to Samuel Jackson and Apple TV for showcasing the film to be financially free. Can't forget Jessica Brown for asking for me. And also Tanya at Fab Finance. She helps me to put the rap into Lee. Because you know your last name is Rap Lee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, that was amazing. Thank you. Like, how much time do you have to do that? I know because we, this was, this is a, we pulled this together. So, right. to come up with that so quick is really I did that in like 20 minutes earlier today. When yeah, it was about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> you hit and me with the minutes. I just was like, okay, I got you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it literally would take me a week. It, it would take <laughs> a me week. Like a week to put that. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, I would still be trying to practice next year in 2022. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. No, but I mean, Jessica, like, as far as, like, how has the banker influenced you? Like, I'm really interested in the way that you teach financial literacy to college students. Has it influenced, like, anything that you're going to do differently with them and so forth? Yeah, I mean, it really encouraged me and influenced me to, you know, really really provide more tips and more strategies for these students. I mean, especially seeing all the obstacles that they went through to try to live the American dream, you know? Um, And it took me back to a place where I thought about my dad. You know, my dad has like a seventh grade education, but he Mm. did become a millionaire. But he used to uh, go on pickup trucks um, in the 50s up to New Jersey. Um, A group of white guys hired him to to learn this trade and he was able to buy trucks. And I just think about the banker and how um, Anthony Mackie was sitting outside the bank overhearing conversations yeah. to learn about math to learn about real estate because those were not conversations that were happening you know within the black community and in the household so for me it's just really encouraging me to ensure that students know more about investments students really understand what they need to do um, but more importantly students really become financially free but i want to ask um Mickey, real quick, what are you doing as a parent, as a husband, um, in terms of your finances? What chips and strategies are working for you? And how are you planning for you all's family's financial future? Well, again, this goes back to what we were talking about when I put together this credit freestyle. Um, As I learn, I'm putting it down on paper and wrap format so I can give it back to the people as well in a format called The Dinner Table, which is an audio financial literacy project that I wanna give back to my people. Um, And also, you know, I've just, after the Credit Freestyle on Funkmaster Flex, a lot of black contemporaries have been reaching out to me to be brand ambassadors for their brands, such as Generational Wealth is Clothing Line and uh, Kitty Credit, which is basically a, a black owned app that focuses on the ages of between seven and 12 years old on teaching them how to build their credit. Uh, So by doing these things and constantly feeding this knowledge to myself, I'm opening up so many different doors. So, um, you know, just to add 
more uh, thought process into this, right? Like I said to myself, you know, before the year is over, I want to have eight different accounts open when it comes to finance and, you know, two checking accounts, uh, two savings accounts, uh, two money market, three money market accounts, pardon me. And, and because I'm an artist, I have to do my own independent 401k. I have to have my own HSA account. I have to have um, different accounts that I put and funnel money into every single time I get a little bit of money to make sure and ensure that my family is secure no matter what may happen in the future or even during the present. So I also have life insurance on myself and my wife. And, uh, you know, we can have this conversation for a very long time, but a lot of this knowledge will be on the dinner table. It will be coming out later this year because I want to give back. No more GoFundMe's. We have to do life insurance, people. Facts. I'm, I'm so really happy you said facts, that. Literally facts. <laughs> uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And actually, I have a question because Jessica, you alluded to something about like representation mm -hmm. and you're like hearing the conversations. And that was one of the pivotal moments in the banker was hearing those conversations. So Mickey, I want to ask you and then Jess, I'm curious to you, like what's been one of the most valuable pieces of information you've heard um, or overheard from a conversation that transformed you or the way you looked at things? Uh, I will have to give uh, a lot of credit to the guys over at Earn Your Leisure, uh, Rashad and Troy. There was this one thing that uh, Troy said, he was like, every dollar you make, you have to put to work. So okay. just to add to more value to what uh, Jessica was saying in terms of um, whatever, uh, the money that you use after you pay all your bills and you take care of your credit. Actually, it might have been uh, it might have been you, Tanya, pardon me. Uh, every single dollar after you've done what you've done, you have to put that money to work. They have to be workers. And whenever somebody or something is a worker, it's supposed to generate revenue. So every dollar I make, I try my best to put it to work. And that's from, that's a, just a great quote that came from Troy Millings from Earn Your Leisure. You know, every dollar should be a worker. So I, I, I take that to, to heart and, you know, I put my money in the market. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm making money while I'm sleeping. Yeah, definitely. Best piece of advice. Um, one day I just overheard a conversation um, and they were just talking about always taking the road less traveled, like not mm. being like everyone else. And that's what we were talking about. You know, um, we live in a society where everybody wants to be the same, do the same thing, uh, be very materialistic um, and also understanding patience. Mm. Right. You know, it takes a time to build a uh financial portfolio. It takes time to save. It takes time to get to a place where you can have a beautiful home like, like you have, you know? And um, I just think that that's so important because we are not talking about having patience yeah. uh, and we're not talking about, um, and we're not also talking about being different and, yeah. and, and wanting to take the road less traveled. So those were some uh, tips that I, that I love from an overhearing a conversation, but Nikki Facts, we thank you so, so much for joining us this evening. You were absolutely amazing. Please write down that rap uh, because I need that. <laughs> I need it. I want to know my fair finance. Like, <laughs> yes. And definitely keep us informed about the dinner table and how we can support that as well. Because we're absolutely. looking at the fun. Yes, Thank everybody you. follow at Mickey.Facts, M-I-C-K-E-Y.Facts. Please make sure you guys are following him. He's absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much, Mickey, for your time this evening. Peace, guys. Bye. All right, you guys, we are going to go to a commercial break, and we'll have another special guest coming up next. All right, guys, make sure you vote for the banker in three categories for the NAACP Image Awards. Outstanding actor, Anthony Mackie. Outstanding supporting actress, Nia Long. Outstanding ensemble, the banker. Please make sure you cast your vote by March 5th. So I hope you guys have casted your votes for the banker on the NAACP Image Awards website. Uh, this is the 52nd year of the NAACP Image Awards, and it is so important that we talk about it and highlight um, the importance of this award show because this award show has broken barriers for us to be able to be considered and nominated and highlighted and celebrated for our acting and, and movie accomplishments. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talk about hashtags such as Oscar So White, and, you know, mm -hmm. we're tuned in and hoping that, you know, people who look like us get the credit they deserve or celebrate the manner in which they deserve to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. And we see them go home, we're like, you know what, you really deserve that. And so something like the NAACP Awards ensures that we are celebrating those in our culture or celebrating those who create things specifically for our culture. 
And that's really important. I think that, um, you know, as a kid, I loved watching the NAACP Image Awards, but I don't know if I've necessarily understood how important it was. But now as a creator, as a content creator, I'm like, okay, this is for us. This is something that is really important to support and make sure that we're playing our part in voting. Yes. Like we're here in Georgia, right? Right. Georgia showed up. <laughs> we voted like we were supposed to, but you know, voting is something that you keep on doing. You continue to do, and so forth. Like such as voting for this film, which is um, it's impressive. And from Apple TV, I'm just really impressed that like, they use their resources to create something like this. It's the Apple TV for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the, I mean, the NAACP Image Awards, you know, we always complain about we don't have opportunities, we don't have opportunities. This is our opportunity, you all vote. Get out there, support our people that are doing phenomenal work and that are creating life-changing pieces that are inspiring and influencing our culture. It is up to us to push the culture forward. And the only way that we can do that is to continue to make sure that we are celebrating our community and making sure that we're highlighting people and recognizing them for their contributions. Well, we have a special guest coming up right now. Uh, we have Jean coming in. Jean Alert, Miss at Mr. Alert on Instagram. Uh, we are so excited to bring him in right now, uh, part of our live discussion, and just kind of get to know what he's been doing as a dad, as an entrepreneur, um, as a financial expert as well, um, and giving us some tips on what we can do to obtain financial freedom. Jean? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you guys doing? I've been, uh, yeah, I enjoyed that rap. Exactly. Uh, Mickey. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was backstage <laughs> like, okay, okay. So thank you guys for having me. Uh, my name is Gene. I'm sending uh, my love from New York City, uh, Brooklyn. Um, so uh, thank you guys for having me. I love the banker. So tell us, so tell us what were some uh, pivotal moments that like really touched you in the banker that related to your life that, um, that, that are really, really important to you and what you do as a financial educator. Yeah, well, number one, I wanna tell people, I'm always learning, right? So I've been an entrepreneur for 21 years. This is actually my 21st year in business. Uh, I started off in real estate, so I'm really a real estate expert, but um, not a financial expert, but a real estate. Uh, I've, I own about $12 million worth of real estate. Uh, my portfolio ranges from New York to Florida, um, but we, um, but the thing I learned from the banker that really resonated with me was even in the beginning where he went to dinner with his father-in-law and they laughed at him, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When he told them, I wanna get into real estate. I can that because when I was 18 and I'm, I'm from a Haitian background. And so when I, I went and told my family, my own family, not my father-in-law or whatever, uh, I told my family I'm getting into real estate. They laughed at me and they told me I wasn't gonna be successful. So I felt that character, I saw his face and I remember my face when, I, uh, when he told me it wasn't gonna work. It wasn't gonna work for me. I wasn't gonna be able to own real estate in New York City and uh, because I'm black, you know what I mean? And uh, another part of the movie that I can resonate with was, uh, it has nothing to do with real estate, but it was the way that we as black people, people of color, sometimes we have to use someone else, so, our cousins, right? Um, mm -hmm. to get into the rooms that we, they won't let us in. And some, um, there's a quote uh, by Shirley Chisholm, if they don't want to bring you to the table, you bring your own chair. You know what I'm saying? Like, or something like that. And, but, um, so I used to bring my chairs everywhere, right? And sometimes, uh, I remember I did, a, I did a show with Kevin Hart. And when I introduced Live Nation to Kevin Hart, they didn't know who he was. They didn't want to give him the opportunity. They didn't want to give me the opportunity to produce his show, right? And so I told them, okay, you know what? And I said, there's another guy named Reginald Francis Lewis. And if you're talking about financial wealth, you're talking about legacy plays, you're talking about black billionaires, you guys need to know, Reginald, you guys need to read the book. It's called, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? Period, mm. right? And so I read that book, I studied that book, and this, I won't go into this whole story because you know it's a whole long story, but with him, he used Michael Milken, he used different people because even though he was a Harvard-educated lawyer that helped other people, 
to acquire companies, they would never sell the businesses to him. So what he used to do, he used to take his cousins and bring them in front, let them contract, and then at the closing table, he'll come and pop up and like, I'm the guy, right? And so, mm-hmm. um, so now I had to use that same strategy in 2009, you know, and I think, and we still have to use that strategy in 2021. And so in that, in that movie, The Banker, even though you saw redlining, you saw different things, there was ways that we went around it. And sometimes you see people who um, laugh at you. They don't believe in you. They say, oh, it's never going to work. People won't let you in. You got to find, you got to think, you got to process problems. And the biggest part of entrepreneurship is processing problems. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if you learn how to process problems, you can get through anything. And sometimes it's going, using someone that some people would say are against you. Not everyone's against you. So you got to use your allies to help get into the rooms with your enemies so that, so that you could win for your family. So that's one of the biggest, that's why that's one of my favorite movies. And I'm glad that they, they told the story and showed that, you know, because if, if it's done once, it could be done twice. And I just told you something that I did in, in the entertainment business when they try to say, I can't get in, you know? Um, so yeah, so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love that. I mean, I love that Shirley Chisholm quote. Shirley Chisholm mm-hmm. is just, it's Women's History Month, so yes. let's, uh, but she's just such a trailblazer and so forth. And that quote, I mean, and now what I love is that now we're not just bringing our own chairs, mm-hmm. we making our tables, That's right. we creating the rooms, right. we buying the buildings and everything <laughs> else. So That's it's right. like, hey, y'all don't want to set your little table? Cool. We'll set up our own situation. Yep. I, I just love that. Exactly. I, that's that's the beauty now is you see so many people who are effectively doing this um, and creating that. Like you, yeah. I think it was, it was Mickey who mentioned the earn your leisure guys and yeah. so forth. And just like seeing people like that, just create the, uh, create a new oh, yeah. reality. But you have to have you a have lot to, of courage, I, right? I mean, even I for me starting college girl, I mean, like, like Jean is saying, like everybody was, what are you doing? You know, and it goes back to taking the road less traveled again and creating our own opportunities and creating our own wealth um, for future years to come. So I just think that the story that you told, Gene, was it's, it's really important because we need to begin to do those type of things. We need to begin to be dare to be different to whereas though we can get into these spaces. We need to become friends with our allies and our enemies so we can get into these spaces, you know, so this way we can really make a difference. Yeah. And actually I have a question for Gene and Gene, my question for you is for anybody else who's watching and like, wow, he's been, he's been self-employed for 20 years. He has his impressive real estate portfolio. What was the first thing or what was your first real estate play that allowed you to open the doors for everything else? Good question. Great question. Interesting thing is I always tell people this now because people always see me now and they say, oh my God, you're good. But my first real estate play was a $10,000 investment in Florida, in Fort Lauderdale. It was a, it was a uh, foreclosure. And when I flipped it, because they were doing like a big campaign in New York to like get people out of New York to move to Florida. So I sold that little $10,000 house for 70, right? And then my first big real estate deal was in Brooklyn. It, I bought a four family for like 430 and sold it to, uh, to some cousins, <laughs> uh, well, a rap cousins, <laughs> and they, um, they bought it for 760, you know, and that's where, and that's where and it, like nine months later. So that's where it really opened up the doors for me. And, um, but I could tell you my first rental property, um, I didn't have a good experience. Thank God. Thank God I had money saved up because then I had a good job, right? Well, not job, but uh, I was a mortgage banker. So I made money in the r- r- mortgage industry. My tenants, when I came in and I told them I'm the new owner, they told me they're not paying me any money. And so my- Was this in New York? 20, 21 years old. Yeah, New York, Brooklyn. Yeah, and it's hard. And this is not Brooklyn uh, yeah. where every, you know, Yo, this is this is not Brooklyn where and New York is not like Georgia where 30 days, 45 days, the sheriff's coming kicking you out. This is New York. Mm-hmm. This is a tenant state. So like you can't get rid of people for like a year, you know? And um, so for me, being a kid that people told me not to do it, I didn't want to hear the I told you so. So I just paid the mortgage, didn't say anything and just took care of everything, all the bills. 
And I and I prayed, <laughs> and one day God sent me a letter and say, we want to buy your property. And I sold it, you know, and, so, and I ended up making 360 on it. Wow. So, but, you know, but, um, but, but the thing is, I went back to the, I went back to the tenants in that building and I told them, look, I hope, I pray that you saved up the money the last nine months. And, um, you know, I hope you, I, I would, I would love to see the face that you make when you tell the next owner that you're not paying them. And I was like, it's, it's, it's bad when we, as people, we want to buy things. We want to get into business. We want to buy buildings and real estate. Everyone's telling you buy real estate, but sometimes the people, when, once they see you and they see that you, you know, they look like you, they're like, oh, that's my brother. I'm not paying him, you know, or they mm -hmm. could be late or they get, but you have to realize that for, for us, we have to do it together. And the only way we're going to keep our communities, because gentrification only happens when you let go, you know, yeah, like that's true. you can't gentrify if you don't sell. You know what I'm saying? So, and, um, and so that's one of the things, but, uh, as far as getting into the real estate business, I always tell people, you know, if you have a nine to five, keep it, you know, until, until you start making enough money where your, your, your rental income oversees every bill that you have. Right. Uh, I do have life insurance. I do have annuities. I do have whole life. Uh, I have all of those vehicles because my retirement, I don't have a job. So I have to create, just like Mickey Fax said, you have to create your own 401k. You got to create your own, right? Because if you don't, if you don't, when you get older, you're going to, you're not going to have the same energy you had in your twenties. You're not going to have the same energies in your teens and your thirties, right? In your forties. And so when you're 70 years old, you got to think of a plan, you know, and, and even people who have jobs and re work 30 years they struggle when they retire. So when you're younger and you get into the real estate business or you get into any business, I don't care what you get into. The key is to have a plan. You have to get organized and you have to be productive in your early. In, so all the college students listening right now, watching this, um, you focus on a plan. You stay, you stay the course, right? And you don't let people tell you you can't do it. You know, like in the beginning of when he was at that dinner table and they told him, they were laughing at him and they were like, you crazy. He was so serious. And I, I'm telling you, I felt that because that was me. You know, right. they were laughing at my mom was crying. My mom was crying when I told her that I was going into real estate. She was like, I sacrificed so much for you to come to this country. And this is what you want to do. This is how you want to repay me. Mm -hmm. But now. They see me on the TV. They see I wrote two best. I, I wrote two best-selling books. You know, I'm, I'm married. I have a kid. You know, I'm good. I'm successful. You know, giving out scholarships to kids, and now they're like, "Oh, that's my son. That's my son." <laughs> and so, so you know, so it's so it wasn't it's with you when you were shooting in the gym. You huh? just gotta stay. To, you, no, definitely not. Well, for me, I wasn't shooting in the gym. I was passing flyers on the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jay, I just think you they weren't with me passing out flyers, baby. You know, so that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, no. Well, Gene, um, we love... thank you, thank you, thank you so, so, so much for coming in tonight and sharing um, all that wealth of knowledge about real estate. Um, I, I mean, you definitely taught me a lot tonight. Um, and our story sounds so similar about how we started our business and our families and our support. Um, so I just appreciate your time and sharing your story, your portfolio. And I can't wait to learn more and read your books and share your materials with our audience. So thank you so much, Gene, for joining us tonight for this live discussion. Thank you guys. And last thing, can I share one thing? Last thing. Um, sure. It's soon ne next next month. I'm actually releasing a planner. It's a dateless, timeless planner called Faith Grind Inspire Planner. I would love for you guys to check it out. It's a new way to be productive and organize your day to really maximize your days without uh, the time the time periods. You know, so you manage tasks, not time. So um, oh, I like my that. book is Do Right, Do Good. Yeah. So uh, minute, follow me, not... check it out. You'll hear it. Thank you, guys. All Bye. right. Thank you, Gene. All right, everybody. We are going to a commercial break. But as always, please make sure you vote the banker on the NAACP Image Awards.net in three categories. Outstanding actor, outstanding actress, and, of course, outstanding ensemble. 
almost time. It's almost time to watch the film. Get your popcorn ready. It's time to pop your popcorn. And we'll be right back. Please make sure you continue to show your support for the hashtag I am the banker campaign by following me on Instagram at College Girl JB, Tanya Rapley at MyFab Finance, Full Circle Strategies, and of course, Apple TV. Well, Jess, I just want to celebrate you. You know, I'm a proud mentor right now because you really did pull together an all-star lineup of just people who are doing dynamic things. You're doing dynamic things. I'm doing dynamic things. And so are, so is Mickey and Jean and so forth. But what, you know, every opportunity is, um, or every event is an opportunity to learn and so forth. So what did you learn in this conversation? Oh my gosh, I've learned so much. I learned one about real estate and I definitely can't wait to call Jean to learn some more about real estate because it's definitely time for me to buy a house. I'm getting to that age where it's time to stop renting and start and start buying. Um, so I learned a lot about that. I learned a lot about patience. I learned about task and not time. And that is so important. I'm so happy he said that because um, it's all about knocking out tasks and not really worrying about the time. Patience is a virtue. Mm-hmm. Um, lastly, I also learned um, just the importance of making sure that we have life insurance, we we are budgeting, we do have good credit, um, so this way that we can uh, secure all of life's luxuries. So I definitely learned a lot tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think, you know, I, it was great to be introduced to the resources that um, Gene has created and so forth. So I definitely encourage people to follow him. I think it's always great to see real estate investors that look like you. Um, also wanted to use this time to talk about a few other resources available to people. My friend Julian Gordon, multifamily mastermind. His goal is to help a thousand people purchase a multifamily property and he's doing it. Mm. So far in his community, I think they have 308 people have purchased multifamily homes through his program and so forth. So that's a great resource. Checking out some of those podcasts, Earn Your Leisure um, is, is a great podcast. My friend Kendra Barnes over at The Key Resource is a woman talking about real estate investing. Andrell Harris is another woman talking about real estate investing. Um, Sonia Booker is another woman talking about real estate investing. There are so many resources out there, but I will say, they ain't all good resources. So if you guys have questions about who's legit or not, I invite you into my DMs and ask me like, hey, do you know about this person? Also, Kiara and her husband over at Charm City Buyers in Baltimore, they are literally buying blocks in Baltimore. So definitely um, recommend them too. Kendra, uh, Kiara and Khalil. So if you have questions about resources, hit me up because like I've been doing this work for seven years now. So um, my Rolodex is thick. But that's so important that you say that because, you know, we just see tweets about things or people make things look good. Everybody's an entrepreneur. Everybody's talking about finances, but that don't mean everybody's information is accurate. So you want to definitely make sure this is when the books that we talked about earlier and you talked about reading books and finding these real resources and, you know, following up and watching different interviews, the Susie Ormans and um, the money manual, you know, really come into play. So it is so important that you guys are really doing the research necessary to make sure that you are living an amazing financial future. And so I'm just really thankful we had this conversation and I really hope that everyone enjoys the film. Like how dope is that? I know things are different because we have a different existence now, but this is an opportunity for you to get comfortable. You know, you can go wash your, I think we're going to take a break before we actually screen the film. So you can go like wash your face, put your hair up, get comfortable and so forth and watch (laughs) a movie in the comfort of your own home. Cause I know that I'm going to do that. Yes. And with, and I also just want everybody to know once this live ends, the movie is going to be streamed on Zoom. So we are dropping that link. That link will be in my Instagram bio. Um, we are also going to drop the link on our Facebooks. Um, if this is a private screening, you guys. You guys are getting something special. And also, um, I want you all to share your stories with me about The Banker and express the interest in the film because if you guys do do this in social media posts, hashtag I am the banker, we are going to give you six months free of an Apple TV uh, subscription. So please make sure you guys are posting, telling us your feelings about the film, voting for the film. Remember, you guys have until March 5th 
to vote for the banker in all three categories. So we want to make sure you guys are supporting uh, this amazing film on the NAACP Image Awards website and ensure that you guys are voting. And I can't wait to watch this movie in just a few minutes. I mean, is that applicable to me? Do I get six months for your Apple TV? Because I, I I will take it. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I I'll got take you. It. I got you. You know, <laughs> Karis, you know, he's expensive. Right. I mean, you know, the great thing is my friends at Full Circle Strategies, I mean, they are absolutely amazing to help make this event possible. So we can definitely get you an extra Apple TV code. So tonight, you guys, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in on such short notice. Um, I hope you guys learn so much, and I hope you guys continue to learn more about finances and your future. Um, additionally, learn so much from this movie, The Banker. It's such a valuable movie with lots of lessons in there um, that are going to encourage you to live a better life and, and be a better person overall. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me for this conversation, Jessica. You guys can follow me at MyFab Finance. We'll be doing a few things to help you achieve your financial goals. Um, and our mission is to help you make better financial decisions so you can achieve your financial goals and live a life you love. So make sure you're following us over there too. Yes. And of course, last but not least, I have to thank Kamari Flash Films Productions, as well as Satchel Gesture um, for helping us come up with this amazing event in 72 hours. So thank you so much to our production team. You guys are amazing. Um, and you guys, it's showtime. So grab your popcorn, put it in the microwave, and I'll see you in about five minutes. And we're going to go live on my Instagram live. So we'll see you in just a few minutes. So keep staying tuned. And thank you so much. Share your story or just tell me how you feel about the film by hashtagging I am the banker, tagging me and at MyFabFinance. The best posts will win a six-month subscription to Apple TV. Can't wait to see.